Hello everyone. Welcome to another session of Lucid Mains. Today, let us look into the details of the new regulations that were brought into the e-commerce field. This topic is important especially for those who are attending interview this year. First, let us look at what the reason issue is. In the last week of December, the government released a document titled a review of policy on foreign direct investment in e-commerce. It seeks to clarify foreign direct investment norms which were mentioned in the foreign direct investment policy of 2016. The changes will bring about certain restrictions to foreign e-commerce platforms and are set to come into force from February 1st, 2019. Now let us see what all the new regulations are. First and arguably the most important regulation is the restrictions on ownership. The new rules makes it clear that an e-commerce entity providing a marketplace cannot exercise ownership or control over the goods purported to be sold. That is, from the first week of February, e-commerce companies like Amazon and Flipkart cannot sell products of companies or through companies in which they hold equity share. Earlier, the rule was that a single vendor or its group cannot account for more than 25% of sales in a marketplace. But now, the rules bar sales by any entities where the e-commerce firm has an equity sale. Before we see the next regulation, let us see what marketplace model and inventory based model are. A marketplace model is one wherein an e-commerce entity provides an IT platform on a network to act as a facilitator between the buyer and the seller. As per the FDI policy of 2016, FDI of up to 100% was allowed under the automatic rule for business to business transactions using marketplace model. Contrary to this is the inventory based model. This is the model where inventory of goods and services is owned by e-commerce entity and is sold to the consumers directly via a network. Unlike marketplace model, FDI is not permitted in the inventory based model. So, coming back to the new regulations, another important regulation is that if more than 25% of the purchases of a vendor are from a marketplace entity, say like Amazon, then the inventory of that vendor will be deemed to be controlled by the e-commerce entity. Such an ownership or control over the inventory will render the business into an inventory based model. To ensure level playing ground in the e-commerce arena, the new regulations have certain features included in them. Important among them is the rule that e-commerce entities providing marketplace should not directly or indirectly influence the sale price of goods and services. Also, facilities like cashback and services such as logistics, warehousing etc. provided by the e-commerce marketplace should be fair and non-discriminatory in nature. Also, e-commerce marketplace entity can no longer mandate any seller to sell any product exclusively on its platform only. The new provisions mandates marketplaces to submit to the Reserve Bank of India an annual compliance certificate from their statutory auditors. Now let us see the impact these regulations will have on the various stakeholders. As one can expect, on the foreign e-commerce entities, the new regulations is bound to have severe impacts. Since the 2016 policy opened up the sector for foreign direct investment, large firms such as Amazon and Walmart have made significant investments, but now they will be forced to alter the shareholding equations. It will also restrict the smooth flow of FDI into the sector which can inhibit the growth of e-market in India. For easy understanding on how an e-commerce entity will be impacted, an example is provided in the file attached with this video. Now, the Indian marketplace entities have been raising concerns over unfair competition and market practices since the release of the 2016 policy. Now, the absence of large retailers will bring relief to small retailers selling on this platform. Also, with exclusive deals now gone, traders running traditional brick and mortar stores can hope to gain. For the government, the new rule brings forth various advantages. First of all, the new regulations help to plug loopholes that were in the FDI policy of 2016 and helps to ensure a level playing ground in the e-commerce sector. Also, it helps in better regulation of the foreign direct entities by mandating compliance with the RBI. 
For the customers, however, the new rules are not beneficial as they may no longer enjoy the deep discounts that are offered by such retailers. Now, let us look into the concerns that the new regulations create. First of all, the new rules goes against the government's initial assurance of minimum government maximum governance as it leans heavily towards heavy-handed regulations. Government is seen as trying to micromanage the e-commerce businesses. The fresh restrictions and the clarifications on certain operational aspects could reinforce investor complaints about India being an unpredictable in terms of policies. Also, the new policy does not consider the opinion of the producers. The new rules restrict exclusive sales by the entity. But what if a producer wants to sell their products exclusively through a single e-commerce platform? The rules, however, are silent in this regard. The new rules can stifle the benefits that online aggregators create, such as reduced logistics, storage and intermediary cost. Another concern is the discrimination between large Indian and large foreign entities. None of the new measures apply to large e-tail platform set up by Indian players such as Big Bazaar or Reliance. So, if a Reliance retail want to sell massively discounted goods, this is permitted even if Indian retailers are hit. Besides these, the critics argue that in a retail market as large and diverse as India's, it is a fallacy to believe that e-commerce players will drive everyone to the wall. They also argue that the rules were released without any consultation with the market or the major stakeholders. So, concluding, it is clear that given India's drive towards a digital economy, the new guidelines are indeed regressive. But rules are needed to prevent anti-competitive behavior in the e-commerce industry. But for this, back in April 2018, the government had set up a task force to finalize an e-commerce policy on the fast-growing e-commerce sector of India. Many argue that the present regulations could have waited till the recommendations of this task force were out. As for anti-competitive practices, institutions such as the Competition Commission of India are already in place. So, rather than micromanaging the in industries, the government should focus on empowering these institutions to ensure effective enforcement. Now, as part of long-term strategies, some regulations may be appropriate in the view of concerns over data privacy and the uses to which data is put. Also, measures may be initiated for the promotion of rupee card so as to reduce the dependency on foreign payment giants such as Visa and MasterCard. Besides these, focus should be given on creating a separate platform for MSME vendors and also ensuring them easy access to finance. Thank you.